Hey guys, Jay Williams here, embarking on a new project. Uh, if I have any nose hairs, errant nose hairs, I apologize. Um, so this project is a titanium high capacity 1911 in 10 millimeter. Uh, it's a Caspian kit and it's got some proprietary parts on it, which is why it's a kit. Uh, and I'll show you all the parts, but there's less flexibility in some of the components because um, they, they are proprietary, they, they fit only this frame and that includes the ambidextrous thumb safety and a few other things so I'll go through that um, but I think it's going to be a super super awesome gun um, in the back of my mind I have uh, the, my idea is the ultimate combat pistol um, of course you could debate what that means to me though I kind of think this might be the ultimate combat pistol. We'll see when it's all finished, but I think it's going to be a fun build. It'll be a little simpler, I think, than other builds because of the proprietary parts that are mostly fit already. Uh, there'll be some fine-tuning required uh, to get the parts to fit, but for the most part, not a ton of handwork like there potentially is on other 1911 builds. There doesn't have to be, but you can get the parts that require gunsmith fitting. Um, so potentially there's a lot of hand fitting on other builds. This one, not quite so much, but I'll get into that as we uh, go on this journey together. All right, the heart and soul of the gun. This is a Caspian frame. Um, it's the combat model, or I don't remember if that's what they call it exactly, but it's got the Picatinny rail up here so you can put a light on there, or laser, or whatever you want. Um, it's high capacity, so it's double stack. So it's got the, the wide grip, and it's beveled around here for ease of loading. So this is part of the kit, obviously. Now, what I'm going to show you here is not part of the kit. This is an STI slide, which I ordered separately, and I sent to Caspian and they fit it to the frame for me. Um, apparently titanium galls, so when metal, the steel slide here rubs on the titanium it can smear the metal called galling and what what you do then after you fit the the slide to a titanium frame is called um, carbonization or carbonizing. The process specifically is a micro welding of tungsten carbide to the rails. It makes the surface very hard and reduces wear and prevents galling. So I sent it to them. I didn't want to worry about the equipment or invest in the equipment and mess around with doing all that. So they fit this and did all that work for me. Now I don't know if you can see it in this light, but if you look carefully you might see a texture here. So I'm pretty sure this is a casting it would take enormous effort, time and expense, to machine this out of billet. So, I think you can probably see that. There's a texture here, and I believe that's from the casting. Now, uh, what they would do would be to machine these surfaces, this surface, these sides that machine this whole surface and the 1911 rail here, the slot, and so forth, all this. But they would start with a casting, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what they did based on this texture and on the knowledge that uh, machining titanium is very difficult. So that's the frame and the slide. So so that's the first part of the kit, is this high capacity frame. Let's look at some of the other things that I got as part of the kit. Um, these little buttons are just for the grips. Little uh, Caspian logos there that you can use in the grips if you want. Beaver, this is the beaver tail grip safety. And this is going to require a little fitting. Um, actually, what I think I'll need to do is take a little metal off the frame that, that where this fits into it. But we'll get into that later. But you can see you've got these protrusions on the sides here, so it's not 
not a normal beaver beaver tail so you can't just get any beaver tail you want um, high capacity so it's for their high capacity frame and also titanium um, this I don't think was part of the kit it's an ejector it looks standard to me if I just glance at it so it's probably not part of the kit uh, it's stainless steel um, actually let me hold off on that that's also not part of the kit alright trigger it's got a real wide trigger bow since that's a high capacity a wide high capacity frame the magazine of course goes right through there so it's got to be wide to accommodate the, the high capacity the double stack magazine um, guaranteed unbreakable premium grade American made high capacity trick trigger anyway so it's probably aluminum um, also I'm not yeah this is probably part of the kit as well um, or, uh, ambidextrous thumb safety take a look at that um, now this just says premium grade guaranteed unbreakable American made high capacity ambi safety so I don't know if this is steel but again this is proprietary you can see this here is not the normal pivot pin that you'd have in a a thumb safety in a 1911 so this is one of the ambidextrous pieces for this gun and you can see there's a notch right there so these two fit together like that alright so that's another part of the kit the ambidextrous safety mainspring housing titanium $62.15 um, if you were just to buy this but it's part of the kit and again the kit I think was around 900 bucks um, and you can see this is also not a normal mainspring housing it's it's different down here bobtail and I haven't really looked at it too closely I'm not sure what this is this also is a very tight fit so along with the beaver tail and this there'll be a little fitting required just to get them to go but but not a lot just a little bit alright so that's the main spring housing also part of the kit and I think this is the last part of the kit high capacity magazine catch and again this so this is really wide to accommodate the wide grip for the double stack magazine and if you can see that little shiny spot there I tried putting this into the gun there's a shiny spot there and a little bit right there because it would not there too it wouldn't quite fit so this will take just a tiny bit of fitting for it to go looks like there's I don't know if there's a line across there or how they, yeah, well, this, okay, there definitely is on this side. There, you can see that line. So I'm not sure how this is manufactured. Or maybe that line is just from machining this thing. And I installed um, the cat, the spring and the catch in there already. Anyway, so this will require just a little bit of fitting, but this also part of the kit. All right that is the kit now let me show you what else I have oh okay one last thing this came with the kit um, now I ordered the frame without checkering on the front of the of the grip but it came with checkering I was just gonna put this on to keep it nice and thin but oh and, you, and those little buttons you would pop these out and put those little Caspian logo buttons right there 
but um, since the frame I or since the frame came with checkering, I think what I'm going to do is try to get a thin set of grips and install those instead of this, since that checkering's on the front there. And uh, the mainspring housing does stand proud of the frame uh, for checkering, so I may may try to checker that as well. We'll see. All right. Titanium firing pin. I don't remember what the company is, but it's titanium. I figured I may as well go all out. So, got the titanium firing pin. Uh, Ed Brown disconnector. No big deal. Ed Brown perfection sear. Nothing special. Those are just good quality 1911 parts. You can get Ed Brown or Cylinder and Slide or EGW or a half dozen companies that make really good stuff. Um, skeletonized hammer. Okay, that's a cylinder and slide. Clark custom guns. Triple spring. Wilson Combat spring plug, recoil spring plug, firing pin spring extra power. Um, yep, and then some barrel links. Ed Brown. Rebuild kit. This has different pins and springs. Everything you need for a 1911 build. Ed Brown firing pin stop. Um, I don't remember if this one... Okay, this one may not require hand fitting. Yeah, it's got the round curve here and rounded corners here. So it's definitely not the super oversized one that requires tons of fitting. If any fitting. We'll see. But that's an Ed Brown 470 series. Can be modified to fit the 80 series. I don't actually know what the difference is 70 versus 80 when it comes to the firing pin stop. Anyway, Ed Brown again, hammer strut. Wilson recoil spring guide. Nothing fancy, just a good quality part. And EGW uh, slide stop. Nothing fancy, just a good quality part, and that should fit just fine. That part of the frame, um, I believe it's just a standard 1911 dimensions, so this should work okay for that. It's not part of the part of the frame that requires proprietary stuff. This is a Barstow 10 millimeter barrel, and it's got a para ordnance lower lug. It's a ramped barrel, you can see here. And this is a ton of metal down here. This is a very strong barrel. Should provide lots of life, even though it's 10 millimeter. Even full power loads should go and go and go. Run real nice. So that is the barrel. Got a few springs here. Um, these are wolf springs. Got a couple 28 pounders and a 24 pounder. So I imagine I'll use the 28, but I can experiment. And now this is interesting. This has been a big challenge in collecting the components that I've needed. Magazines. Um, I ordered magazines from Caspian initially, and they're labeled 40 S and W. And in fact, if you try loading them with 10 millimeter rounds, maybe you can load them to capacity with some 10 millimeter cartridges, but other 10 millimeter loads will not fit. So the heavier bullets with the fatter noses, maybe a little longer overall length, I could only get them partially full, and then they would bind where the magazine gets narrower here. And those magazines have, I believe, I believe this is the exact base plate that those magazines come with. I actually bought three of them, but then I returned them. 
I was told they could be modified to work for the 10 millimeter build, but I don't believe it because the inside here of this shape won't change, and I think with some 10 millimeter rounds, I will not be able to load those to capacity. So it took some research and asking around, but I finally figured out what I'll do about magazines. This magazine is for the EAA Witness 10 millimeter semi-auto pistol. Uh, 25 bucks. Labeled K10, holds 14 rounds. Uh, let's see, FT, made in Italy. It's got a plastic base plate, I don't care about that, and I'll explain why in a minute. And I, I ordered this, and it will hold 14 rounds of 10 millimeter. I made up some dummy rounds with golden saber bullets, and I got 14 in here. There's a guy who takes this magazine, starts with this magazine, and he modifies it to work for 10 millimeter high capacity Caspian frame or high capacity Caspian frame when you do the build for 10 millimeter and this is the end result um, he makes he told me seven modifications to it and I figured out what those were so I bought I have this original and I have this one I got from him he starts with this you can see he changes the base plate he changes the follower and the spring and he does machine work. So this single magazine with shipping was 102 bucks plus change. Um, and he said he charges, that was like $10 and something for shipping in the US, which, you know, part of that you could chalk up to handling because the shipping wouldn't be 10 bucks. Um, he said he charges $25 for labor and the rest of it's parts. So the magazine's 25, and he would have he he would have purchased this base plate, and the follower and the spring. So you add all that up, he charges 25, and that came to 90 dollars or 92 dollars, plus 10 something shipping. And I got this magazine, and I think it's going to work. All right, those are all the parts that I have. Um, I still need sights, and I think I will be getting the XS Big Dot sights. And I'm planning on putting a tactile light on this gun. Uh, I think it's going to be super awesome. So that's the start. Those are the parts. And let's get into it.